G'day everyone, how's it going? My name is Carl from ComfortablyLost.com and welcome to the Comfortably Lost YouTube channel. Uh, this is one of the many videos in a series of van life, information, advice, DIY tips, that kind of thing. Today we're going to talk about the pros and cons of lithium phosphate batteries as your house power storage battery in a self-contained RV, camper van, home and wheels. Just a little bit of a backstory. We built our van, we started building our van about two years ago, um, January 2017. So we, we started our van off as completely bare bones. There was nothing in it, it was an empty panel van. And we'd had a couple of camper vans in the past and we knew from the start that we wanted to have a, a good source of power and not have too many problems with uh, having to run out of power and manage our power. We wanted to have a surplus uh, because we were going to be traveling full time, living full time in the van and also using the van as a little mobile office, mobile studio kind of thing. So with that in mind, we, we set about uh, thinking about our battery options. We uh, got quotes from all the different suppliers um, around Australia for like AGM, traditional deep cycle batteries and uh, lithium batteries and gel batteries and all sorts of different options. We looked into it all and in the end we chose to get a 200 amp hour uh, lithium phosphate battery and they are Winston cells and it's a 12 volt pack so there's four cells and they form a 12 volt pack. So why did we do that even though a lithium that sort of that pack of lithium cells for a 200 amp hour pack it cost more than double of the equivalent amount of power for a AGM deep cycle battery. So that's what I want to talk about you. So if, if you're in the same position as us, you're uh, looking at doing either like a major overhaul of your existing van and you're, you're willing to spend a little bit of money uh, doing the overhaul and upgrading your power system, or if you're doing a, a new build from scratch and you're also looking to travel full time off-grid, use your van as an office, home and wheels, this information might be interesting for you. I'm just going to go over the reasons that we went through and why we chose a lithium phosphate battery over a uh, AGM battery, even though I could have walked into any store. Um, we were living in Sydney at the time. I could have gone around the corner to, to the battery store and bought a few AGM batteries and that could have been the end of it. Instead, I went down this kind of alternative path of getting a lithium battery. The most important reason why we chose a lithium battery is because they are very compact. So our 200 amp hour lithium battery is about the same physical size and the same weight as a 120 amp hour deep cycle battery. Um, but the difference is a 200 amp hour lithium battery has about 180 usable amp hours of power in it compared to uh, you know, 50% is usable in a deep cycle battery. So 120 amp hour deep cycle battery will have about 50, maybe 60 amp hours of actual usable power in there. Whereas if you drain it further, you can, uh, you know, basically damage the battery or reduce the amount of charges and discharges that you'll get out of that battery in the future. So the lithium battery, the, the sort of um, bang for buck for kilograms for, for space and weight, the lithium battery is, is the number one option that you can basically get on the market. Um, that was for us the number one primary reason because we've got um, underneath where I'm sitting at the moment, we've got a little uh, electronics battery storage box and that box I only had that much space and unless I completely redesigned where I put the batteries and put them underneath the seats or did something else, I really just want to have the battery under there and I sort of worked out the lithium battery is going to fit into that space and also uh, you know it's it's a lot lighter as well for the amount of power that you get it's a lot, a lot less weight which is really important as well so we sort of saved 40 kilograms in the end by using a lithium battery instead of a deep cycle battery so that's the main thing the other thing that's really great about lithium batteries and it's not something that I was aware of at the time but the lithium batteries work really well at doing par partial charge and discharge. Now, where this comes in really handy is like what we've, in the past few days that we've just experienced, when you have maybe two or three days where it's overcast and you'll just get a little bit of a charge 
from your solar panels, um, but your battery might go from 60% up to 80%, and then overnight it drops, and then during the day it drops, and then charges a little bit, and then maybe on the third or fourth day like today, you have a nice sunny day, and your battery will eventually charge to 100%. It's, it's on its way, it's on 83% at the moment. So the, with lead acid batteries, because of the battery chemistry, and I, you know, I'm not a, an engineer, and I'm not gonna go into the, the, the chemical specifics, but the way that the, the uh, lead acid deep cycle batteries work, they really don't uh, perform very well and tolerate those, those micro charge discharges. They really, from my previous experience, they really prefer to have a nice strong charge and be kept on a float charge. Whereas lithium batteries, it doesn't cause any harm to the battery doing a partial charge discharge. The only time you can really harm a lithium battery is if you deplete that battery below its sort of 10% reserve capacity. Um, so I've actually got our little battery monitor set up. So when it's a zero on the battery monitor, it actually still has um, 20 amp hours left in the battery. So it actually it has always that sort of emergency reserve. So the lithium batteries work really well when you are like us, you're full-time traveling, you're full-time living, working from your van, and you are going to have different weather conditions. You're gonna be charging from your alternator, which we've just installed a couple of weeks ago, or you're charging from solar. That's when the lithium battery really shines as well. So doing those partial charge and discharge, which with a standard lead acid battery, it's possible to do it, but it's just not really good for that battery life and sort of maintaining that battery in the long term. Whereas a lithium battery, it's perfectly fine. So that really works well. The other really good thing with lithium batteries is that they have a very fast charge rate and also a very fast output discharge rate. So that's also perfect for when you're running solar or running an alternator. So if you've got an alternator connection through a, a little DC to DC charger, you can pump in basically as much power into the battery and it'll accept it and it'll charge really quickly. Whereas, um, and same with the solar. So if you've got a nice sunny day and your solar panels are running like uh, they're close to their maximum efficiency, that's gonna take all that power in and absorb it into the battery. Whereas it, it won't work quite as efficiently and effectively with a deep cycle um, lead acid battery. So that's the other thing. And, and conversely, lithium batteries have a really good discharge output rate. So if you're running a, you know, like a high wattage inverter, you're running like an induction stove or, um, you know, like a blender or a food presser or something that needs like a thousand watt or a 1200 watt inverter, um, having a lithium battery is a really good option on that front as well. So if you're planning to run those sorts of devices, you know, like a 200 or you know, 300 amp hour lithium battery will be able to like easily put that power out and it does in a way that doesn't like deplete and damage the battery as well. Um, so that's a really handy thing. So what are the downsides? Um, well, the most, probably the main downside to lithium batteries are the cost. So they're expensive. We, it was probably two and a half times more expensive, maybe three times more expensive to have a lithium battery set up with 180 usable amp hours. Um, when you include not only the battery, but having to freight the battery in because I couldn't find a, a supplier in Sydney. I had to find a, I got it shipped down from a supplier in Queensland. So it was like the battery, I had to buy the battery, um, the cell balancer, and also the cell monitor, which is that little thing just up here on the wall. And that's the battery monitor there. So I ended up spending uh, sort of like $1,800 in the battery um, kit, plus the freight, plus the little cell manager and the cell balancer. And then I also spent probably another $1,000 on getting a compatible um, M uh, Victron MPPT charge controller with a programmable output, so that's compatible with lithium batteries, and also with the Enerdrive DC to DC charger as well, with also the programmable outputs. Uh, that's necessary for the lithium batteries. So you don't damage the battery and overcharge it. And then also um, all the other paraphernalia and gadgets that I kind of needed to make sure that the battery was charging properly and being maintained and monitored properly. So the price, they're definitely something that um, takes a little bit of, uh, you know, when you're looking at one option, it's going to cost you $1,000 and another one that's going to cost you two and a half, three thousand dollars $3,000. Uh, that's a lot of money there. And 
So if you're on a really tight budget and you, you know, you really are on that budget and you can't really budge from it and you've only got, you know, a thousand dollars or less, the lithium battery is probably not going to work for you because buying, buying uh, cheap quality sort of um, inferior cells will not pay off in the long run like most things. So yeah, so buying like good quality cells, I'm using the Winston uh, lithium phosphate cells. They are pretty hard to get in Australia. I think maybe a little bit easier in the in North America, um, but yeah, in Australia they're pretty tricky to find a supplier. I eventually found there's one sort of on the west coast and there's a couple on the east coast. Um, so yeah, finding someone to supply their cells and getting good quality cells, that's something that's pretty tricky to do as well. So something to keep in mind. Um, the other thing to keep in mind as well, if you are either installing the battery and all your DC um, cabling electronics yourself, or if you're planning to have someone else install it, like you're getting your um, electrical stuff done from someone else, or if you're getting your whole van built by someone else, keep in mind that a lot of, say most auto electricians know absolutely nothing about lithium batteries and battery charging and technology. Um, I spoke to about five or six auto electricians that I wanted to get them to help me to install the battery and set it all up and balance it. And all of them basically either said, uh, sorry, not interested, or they said, uh, you know, I don't know anything about it. I'm gonna to have to do some homework and research or the ones that did say that they knew something about it. When I asked them a few more questions, I wasn't really convinced that they were that knowledgeable. So in the end, I jumped online and I talked to some people on, on online forums and Facebook groups and I spoke to the distributor of the batteries and um, asked some questions about the installation and the setup and I ended up doing it um, ourselves. So that was a good thing in like now it's a good thing because I'm, I have a lot more information and knowledge about uh, lithium battery technology and how it works and, and what's better and what's not. But at the time I was doing, you know, Jala and I were doing together, uh, designing and building and we we're doing so many other components on the van and we we're really busy and really stressed out and we just didn't have the time and resources to put into learning about the lithium battery and setting it all up and getting all the compatible stuff. Um, the other problem is if you if you have a van already and you've already got deep cycle batteries in there and you've already got you know a solar charge controller and it, it's fairly good quality gear but maybe a little bit old, it might you you probably have to weigh up um, weigh up whether it's worth doing an upgrade to lithium or not because it will mean that you'll probably uh, you'll probably have to upgrade your solar charge controller and your DC to DC sort of alternator charger. All those bits of paraphernalia, you'll probably have to upgrade those as well as the battery. So the cost for you, it's not simply getting new battery and dropping it in. You're going to have to get the battery, you're going to have to get the battery, uh, the cell balancer, the cell monitor, the battery monitor, um, and possibly a new solar charge controller and DC to DC charger as well. So it's, you know, you might be also looking at basically having to overhaul your entire electrical system, whereas it might be more cost effective for you just to buy a good quality uh, deep cycle, you know, gel um, or AGM battery and replace that and kind of use your existing components with it. So that's something to keep in mind. And yeah, and, and on that topic as well, I've just written a note down about it. The lithium compatible, sort of lithium friendly devices, so your AC to DC chargers, your solar charge controllers, your DC to DC chargers, the ones that are programmable or lithium friendly, they're all on the top tier. So they're all quite high quality brands. They're Victron, they're Enerdrive, they're Red Arc. They cost quite a lot. You can't skimp out and cheap out. You can get away with a lot more with, with the old lead, lead acid batteries, but with the, lithium, with the lithium batteries, you have to do it right and you have to have the right gear and the right gear costs money. So that's something to keep in mind. It's not just the battery, it's, it's all the other gear that you have to factor into your budget and think about. So hopefully I haven't scared you off, um, but that's just the reality of the situation. So bottom line, What's, what's the takeaway that I really want you to, to think about um, if you're in the process of making a choice? So lithium batteries are the best option for a uh, vehicle, especially if you're full-time. 
if you're part-time, if you're going to caravan parks and you're plugging into shore power, um, if you're just traveling on weekends or like one week trips, the lithium battery may not be worthwhile for you. It might not be good enough value for you. But if you're like us, you're doing a full overhaul of your van and you've budgeted for an electrical overhaul and getting all the new gear, or if you're doing a build from scratch and you have the budget and you have the money to get a lithium system and, and get all the paraphernalia, then it is definitely the best option. Um, it's just expensive. It's an expensive investment compared to uh, deep cycle lead acid sort of batteries. The, the last thing, and I'm just reading, I've got a, some notes here. The, the very last thing as well is even if you are traveling full time, maybe even if you have the money in your budget, it really depends on your space and weight considerations as well. So I've spoken to a couple of people who have like those big uh, coach buses and school bus conversions. And they were sort of like, look, man, it's, it's not worth um, spending $2,000 more um, to have the same amount of available power because my bus has, you know, two ton of, or three ton of payload, you know, a, an extra hundred kilograms means nothing to me. So if you're in like a truck or a bus or a bigger vehicle, which has a really large payload capacity, the extra bit of weight of having deep cycle batteries might not actually have any noticeable impact on your, on your handling or your fuel mileage. Um, and it might not really be a consideration. So even though there's all the benefits of lithium, aside from the, the space and the weight, the space and the weight is the number one benefit. Um, there are some people that I've met and spoken to, and it's simply just not worth it for them um, because they don't have those, those space and weight considerations. So that's something to keep in mind as well, um, depending on the size you build. But if you're like us, if you have a you know like a small van or if you, if you have a large van, but it's you know it does have that... Uh, space limitation you've done a full fit out and you've got all your equipment in here and you, you're being really mindful to keep your vehicle um you know not over overladen and and legal and you want to keep it legal and safe uh then a lithium battery is definitely going to be your best bet and then you get all those extra perks of you know better discharge and charge and all those other things so something to keep in mind i will um provide the links to the supplier for any other aussies out there who are looking at doing a van build I'll put the links in the description um, below. If anyone has any um, questions, comments, suggestions, ideas, anything like that about this video or any uh, uh, requests as well for other videos, feel free, leave a comment below. Or if you want to send us a private message, uh, jump onto our website, which is comfortablylost.com. And on that website, there's a contact us um, area and you can fill the form out and send us an email through that and we'll endeavor to get back to you as soon as possible. So that's it for today. Um, thanks for tuning in, thanks for watching. Hopefully I wasn't too much of a bore. And uh, like always, um, enjoy yourself, have fun, take it easy, peace out, and we'll see you next time.